I think we all recognize the contribution, significant contribution of the first part of the COP15 in Kunming, particularly through the Kunming Declaration, uh, because it has managed or succeeded in convening the global consensus uh, about the key goals and targets, uh, in particular the framework of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. So that has laid a solid foundation for the continued negotiation, of course, leading up to today, this week and next, as hopefully somehow the global community will be able to address all those uncertain or disputed issues or factors still in brackets today. So by the end of the COP15, we'll be able to really successfully put together a global framework to guide our action and to halt and reverse the loss of nature by the end of this decade there. Besides that, Chinese government, as the presidency of COP15, has been actively engaging with different parties throughout the world. As we said, we are talking about here, there are about 195 countries and parties to the, to the convention. That takes a lot of efforts of coordination, engagement, consultation, so that we'll be able to have a successful outcome there. One other factor coming out of the first part of the Kremlin uh, COP uh, is something called the Kwame Biodiversity Fund. Uh, finance has become a major, major part uh, or defining factor of the success or not of this process. Chinese government as a presidency of the COP15 has initiated the first step to put 1.5 billion RMB or about $233 billion million dollars on the table to really supporting the global effort so that more countries will come together to chip in resources and agreeing on more ambitious targets.